A couple months ago, we took a look at the ongoing controversy surrounding Chugga Conroy, an old school Let's Player who has been accused of harassment by multiple women. Our video concluded with the veteran Let's Player disappearing from the internet, presumably for good, with public opinion split down the middle as to whether he was guilty or not. That on top of the completionist charity drama starting a Twitter civil war shows just how fractured the retro slash Nintendo YouTube community currently is. But just recently, Chugga has returned with a lengthy Twitter thread, revealing new information that completely flips the story on its head. But let's first provide some context. As a brief recap, everything started on January 16th, 2024, when a video essayist by the name of Lady Emily accused Chugga Conroy of pressuring her into foot fetish roleplay over Discord several months prior, as well as frequently veering off their conversations into the topic of feet and even sent shoes to her house which she claimed were unwanted. These allegations were accompanied by many screenshots of their Discord conversations together, which she continued to add to over the coming days. Emily's story left people torn. While a great number of people took her side, there were many who remained unconvinced. What needs to be understood is that Emily's screenshots included instances of Chugga asking if the creator was okay with the topic of conversation, and she even posted one image in which she confirmed to him that it was fine. To this, Emily stated that her inability to directly shut down the foot talk was because of her anxiety and depression, but this was not a satisfactory explanation for many of her detractors. Chugga eventually released an official statement on the matter, in which he said that Emily had made him aware of her discomfort long before going public with the story, and he had stopped as soon as she had said something. Emily refuted this the next day though, claiming that the situation had to be settled by a third party after Chugga had allegedly spread personal information about her, although this was accompanied by no evidence. In addition, multiple other women began speaking up about their experiences with Chugga, the most notable of them being fellow Let's player Masaya Nella, with whom he had a long history. In fact, they were once so close that their fans believed that they were romantically involved. In this instance though, she claimed to have cut ties with him several years prior after a string of inappropriate incidents in which he had allegedly pushed boundaries in their relationship. While no specifics or evidence was provided, she stated that she no longer wished to be publicly associated with Chugga. Masei's sentiment was echoed by live streamer Miss Fushi, who similarly claimed that Chugga had behaved in ways that made her uncomfortable in the past. Again, no specifics were mentioned and no evidence was provided, but her statements were corroborated by her boyfriend and fellow Nintendo YouTuber AntDude, who claimed to have witnessed the behavior firsthand. The final bombshell came when an individual who identified herself as Lolly released a document going over her past encounters with the scorned creator in 2010, in which she was 15 and he was 19. She was able to provide screenshots to back up her claim, showing that their conversations often veered into talk of feet and sexual situations. While words like rape and pedo were thrown around jokingly in these conversations, it's very important to note that the two individuals never exchanged photos or met up in person. While some people may have been able to write off the age gap as nothing serious, the fact that Lolly was able to provide evidence that Chugga had been in contact with her and still wanted to engage in foot fetish roleplay as late as 2022 was cause for concern. To many, this was the greatest piece of evidence against the Let's Player, as even his most diehard supporters found it difficult to defend. In the days following these accusations, Chugga's friends began speaking out publicly to voice their thoughts. But the people who fans were most interested to hear from were Proton John and Nintendo Capri Sun, with whom Chugga had maintained a channel called The Runaway Guys with for many years. John took his time responding, finally releasing a statement a few weeks later distancing himself professionally from Chugga and formally announcing the end of their joint venture. On the other hand, Nintendo Capri son, real name Tim, was very forthcoming about his feelings on the whole ordeal, saying that he would stand by Chugga as a friend even though he realized that he had made some serious mistakes. As Chugga's roommate, Tim would also be the internet's greatest source of information regarding what came next. After a few days had passed with no further updates, fans began to grow concerned about his well-being. This was when Tim went to Reddit and began fielding questions regarding the situation. According to him, Chugga had been admitted to a mental health facility a few days before Lolly's allegations had been made public, 
as he had apparently been considering ending his own life. Communication with him while he was in rehab was minimal, as his phone had been confiscated and he was heavily medicated. Upon his return home, Tim stated that while Chugga planned to make another statement on the matter, he didn't know when that would be or in what form it would take. Most assumed that Chugga would be absent from online life for the foreseeable future, with some thinking that he may never be seen again. On March 31st, Tim appeared on a live stream hosted by the channel Burn the World 10, in which they discussed previously unknown aspects of the story. It was at this point I realized I had stumbled upon a brand new rabbit hole of questionable creators. You see, they began their conversations by talking about the accusations. Although this was quickly derailed when the host began babbling nonsensically about the intricate definition of the term lolly as an anime body type for some reason. I just wanted to chime in about that. It's like there's a lot of misconception of what a lolly is, and it's mainly mm -hmm. a body type. Just that. Oh. Short oh, yeah, you, I, I, I don't know that much about it. Yeah. If, if, I can sort finish, of? Yeah. If, I, if I can finish, please. Yeah. It's mainly just <laughs> a body type that's short and petite that is exclusive mm. to anime, manga, or any other mm. kind of Japanese media. This lolly-related tangent went on for 10 minutes while I watched this, during which time Tim barely got a word in edgewise. People in the comments section were clearly frustrated as to why this random channel with 300 subs got involved. Regardless, the hosts were able to shut their mouths long enough for the former runaway guy to actually talk specifically about the accusations from Miss Fushi and Antude, which had largely gone ignored amidst the sea of more damning allegations. According to Tim, Chugga's behavior that had made her uncomfortable had actually been nothing more than a series of unfortunate misunderstandings. Emil and Ant were going to do a collaboration together. They were planning it out and everything, talking about it in Discord, and somehow, I don't know how the subject came up about it, but somehow the subject came up of her, mm -hmm. of Fushi, like, coming to mm -hmm. hang out with them while they did their collaboration. And then at some point, Ant told him, well, no, she can't come to hang out with us. And at that point, Emil stopped responding. Probably Ant took that to mean that, well, if Emil stopped responding, that means he doesn't want to do the collaboration anymore because she can't come. So this led into a series of misunderstandings where they thought that Emil was into her. Oh no. And oh, like this no. just happened like over and over oh, again. No. Based on Tim's wording during the stream, it sounded as if Chugga was planning on making his own statement soon, although a specific timeline was not given. This all changed on April 16th, when Chugga Conroy finally posted a lengthy Google Doc and Twitter thread detailing his responses to each woman who had accused him. He started with Masayanella, dropping perhaps the biggest bombshell reveal of the entire thread. As it turns out, the two had not simply been friends who fell out. They had dated for 10 years and at one point were engaged to be married. According to him, they had both agreed to keep their relationship a secret during their time together so as to maintain a distance between their personal and professional lives. The disagreement started when they broke up, as Chugga wanted to speak about it publicly but Masay wished to remain private. He admits to handling the breakup in a way he now regretted, and while he claimed to have strong feelings about how she worded her accusations, he informed his fans that he would like to be done with her so they could both get on with their lives. This revelation flipped the entire story on its head for many onlookers, who wondered why Masay had omitted this very important detail in her initial callout. They felt this information was vital for the full picture. She stated that she was uncomfortable with the way Chugga talked to and about her in the past, and that he was one to push boundaries. This led many to recontextualize their previous interactions under the belief his behavior was unreciprocated. Suddenly, the videos of Chugga making inappropriate jokes to Masay came across as a man awkwardly flirting with his girlfriend rather than a creep. My rage is making me heated. I should take off my jacket. Mm. No, Emil! <laughs> I'm sorry! No! Do not! I, I am Do not. so sorry! Do not want- Chugga states they broke up in 2021, and as discussed in our previous coverage, she began dating her current boyfriend later that year. The new boyfriend was pestered by fans who still shipped her and Chugga, and around this time she distanced herself from his channel. Next, he moved on to Emily, whose story had already been thoroughly scrutinized by others during the prior months. However, he was able to clear up a few things that had previously been debated. As he told the story, while the statement about a third party reaching out to Chugga on Emily's behalf had been true, he believed that they had hashed it out amicably at the time. 
This was the first time it was brought to his attention that his behavior was making people uncomfortable and prompted him to stop altogether. Despite this, Emily chose to make the situation public, spurred on by a Reddit thread calling Chugga wholesome. Emily had also claimed they did not settle the matter. I never claimed we had a conversation about it. I said it was communicated privately, which it was. I don't think a friend being there contradicts that. While Emily accused him of spreading her personal information, he pointed out she publicly revealed details about his girlfriend, including the country she lived in, which wasn't public. He also brought up the fact that he had sent shoes to her house. While Emily had framed this as a breach of acceptable boundaries, Chugga was able to provide screenshots which showed the opposite. What Emily had failed to mention in her callout was that she had already told him her birthday was coming up and that her old shoes were in disrepair. While Chugga had initially just asked for a P.O. box he could send the gift to, it was Emily herself who chose to provide him with her home address unprompted, an odd thing to do with someone you claim was making you uncomfortable. He was able to provide multiple examples of Emily engaging and playing along with his foot roleplay scenarios without ever expressing that she did not enjoy it. He concluded this section with an explanation and apology as to why he had spammed her inbox with messages after she stopped responding. As many had already assumed, Chugga is on the autism spectrum, meaning he struggled with an inability to pick up on social cues. He claimed that he needed a constant, clear line of communication with his friends in order to understand what they were feeling, although he now understood how his constant messages would be seen as unacceptable. He ended by saying he did not appreciate Emily framing the situation as though he had only taken accountability when he was called out publicly, when he had already seeked counseling well before the story went viral. The next topic of discussion was Lolly. Chugga started by stating in no uncertain terms that he never had any sexual intentions with the girl, and believed she had presented their conversations in a light that made them appear worse than they actually were. According to him, the references to rape and pedophilia had all been jokes, and references to popular memes at the time, pointing out that the early 2010s were a much edgier time in the world and on the internet. You are a piece of shit! I'M GOING TO RAPE YOU! He also included the detail that all of the more sexually explicit conversational topics had been brought up by Lolly, and had actually made him uncomfortable any time it happened. In fact, he had made the decision to cut ties with her all those years ago after an incident in which she mailed a sexually explicit t-shirt to his house. His mother ended up seeing the gift and advised him to stop talking to the girl, which he did. It made me realize they weren't being silly. They were romantically interested in me, not the other way around. The whole thing made me and my mother uncomfortable, and after deliberation, I not only rejected them, but cut all contact with them. The two reconnected many years later in 2021, where he explained to her why he had chosen to step away from their conversations all those years prior. In these screenshots, Lolly appears to fully understand and accept this decision. In her initial callout, she made it seem as if they had remained in uninterrupted contact for the entire time. In addition, Chugga included screenshots from a conversation with Lolly in 2021, in which she made it clear that her teenage interest in him had been blatantly sexual, something he showed clear discomfort towards. Chugga also addressed the foot fetish roleplay the two participated in in 2021. While he admitted that it happened during a particularly bad time in his life, he still made it clear that it was entirely consensual, and that he thought he was on good terms with her, thus making him confused and hurt when she came out with her allegations. It was at this point that Chugga decided to open up more about his personal struggles, both from the past and recently with the controversy surrounding him. As he told it, his relationship with sex had been permanently tainted after a traumatic event during his childhood, and his dependence on roleplay scenarios would flare up during particular times of hardship. But there was hope, as he claimed his stay in the mental ward had actually helped him realize a lot about himself, and come to terms with many of the more destructive coping mechanisms he had. The YouTuber was diagnosed with psychotic depression and a chemical deficiency in his brain. Not only that, but he thanked his friends and girlfriend for staying by his side throughout the whole ordeal. He concluded this thread by saying that he currently does not know if he will be returning to online content creation, as the entire experience has left him wondering if he even likes doing it anymore. But he kept the door open just in case one day he decides to come back. As for his accusers, they have begun to speak out in response. 
It began with Massey, who released a brief statement, confirming her past engagement to Chugga and wishing him the best in his healing. It struck some onlookers as odd that in this tweet she claimed that her desire had always been simply to be left alone, given the vague accusations she made in her initial callout. But it seems like this is the most amicable end possible for the situation for both parties. The day after that, Lolly also returned to the internet in order to clear up her side of the story. She started her document by saying that her main reason for speaking out in the first place was from a fear that Chugga had exhibited similar behavior as he had done with her to other minds. Minors, and was relieved to say that did not seem to be the case. However, she took issue with how he framed the events, at some points even accusing him of outright lying. First, she explained Chugga had not cut contact with her until 2021 as previously stated, showing Discord screenshots proving they were in contact as early as 2017. She alleged they'd been talking over Skype even longer, but she no longer had the evidence to back that up. While she affirmed they met at a convention, she stated that this took place in 2016. The messages show it was not what had rekindled their friendship. If he claims he went through our chats together, he would definitely have known this. We spoke casually, not daily of course, but at no point was contact ever cut off. Their messages were sporadic until 2021 when Chugga and Masay broke up. This message, dated on March 14th, 2021, was sent the day after he learned their relationship was over. Lolly reveals shortly after, Chugga confessed he had feelings for her, which wasn't reciprocated. They first spoke about it on call, with Chugga noting she figured it out within weeks. On July 12th, this places doubt on his timeline and stated reason for reconnecting. Chugga had claimed, 10 years later they approached me at a convention, and that was how we became friends again. I thought after that long, she was a new person and deserved a second chance. The next section discusses Chugga's claim he shut down her crush. Lolly argues he couldn't have known, as she never explicitly told him. This is shown using two messages taken from his document. You rejected me? Oh, this makes sense. I was gonna say I would never have told you I had a crush on you. Ha ha ha. I was big chicken. What she cut out is Chugga explaining how he figured it out anyway. Lolly also disputed the gift she sent was sexual, explaining, It was a shirt. It had an arrow pointing up saying, The Man, and an arrow pointing down saying, The Legend. The kind of lame gag gift you find at Spencer's. But you can decide for yourself if that's something considered sexually explicit. Lolly also took exception to the fact that Chugga tried to frame her as the instigator for their sexual roleplay. Chugga wrote, She was the origin of it, at least in this chat. I don't know if she's where I got the idea from, but it's possible. I guess it's neither here nor there. I didn't know I was into that at 19 anyway. Lolly was able to prove Chugga had in fact been the one to bring up feet, albeit after she brought up tickling. Chugga quickly responded to this on Twitter, apologizing for misconstruing some of the facts. He claims it was the result of trying to recount the story largely from memory. He conceded that he had been the one to bring up the foot play, although he stood firm that he had not seriously reconnected until 2021. The response to both his tweet and the document largely seemed to be in his favor, with people accusing Lolly of making semantic arguments. Some have even chosen to go after Worcester, the streamer responsible for sharing Lolly's document, by posting an old clip of him saying the n-word. Uh, I saw a post on a VG that was, I donated a thousand dollars of Worcester screen fucking niggas on the screen. <laughs> Regardless of if Chugga was the one to bring up feet, it doesn't contradict his explanation as to why it happened in the first place. Although his timeline wasn't accurate, their messages were indeed sporadic until his breakup with his fiancée in 2021. In the screenshots, Lolly acknowledges he set a boundary, and stated at the time she assumed he got busy with life and moved on. Chugga clarified his goal was to slowly fade out. For her part, Emily did not make a post about the situation on Twitter, instead choosing to respond to Chugga's new claims on Reddit on April 18th. A user posted a link to a document with all the messages in chronological order, alongside the context from the respective responses. The author scrutinizes Chugga's explanation arguing he demonstrably pushed her boundaries. While the YouTuber asked if Emily was okay with it on September 12th, he framed them as jokes and didn't disclose his fetish until the next day. He referenced others having it, before admitting he had one, but only for his girlfriend. They argue Emily was clearly getting uncomfortable as her responses changed from absolutely and all in good fun to I'm glad to know. 
The only problem with this is that 10 minutes later, Emily continues talking with him about her shoes. They admit she absolutely participated in the role play on September 15th, joking about how she'll never give up her shoes and telling him to do your worst. This exchange was only shared by Chugga, not Emily. The document also points out the private conversation was overstated. Chugga's apology was far from what could be reasonably considered a definite resolution. It seems to be a common theme in his belief to be on the same page as others when that couldn't be further from the truth. Finally, they point out he's been sending messages like this for 14 years, as well as the alleged half a dozen women with similar stories. It felt unbelievable Chugga had no idea his messages were sexual, and strange that no men came out with similar experiences. They conclude, if such logs get shared, maybe everyone will give Chugga the benefit of the doubt regarding his foot messages. It's still sexual harassment, just unintentional sexual harassment. And when that day comes, he'll only be on the hook for the pedophilia. Friendly reminder, the Emily stuff is the least of what he did. The document was shared on our YouTube drama, the very subreddit that unintentionally resulted in her story going public. Emily thanked the user for compiling all the evidence and stated that she agreed with everything they wrote. When asked if she would make a response, she replied that she was unsure, as she deleted Twitter from her phone and was attempting to lay low. She also stated that the doxing allegations against her were completely false, and pointed out she'd been doxxed herself. People within Chugga's community did not take kindly to this criticism. After her replies were posted onto a subreddit dedicated to following the Chugga Conroy drama, one user stated, It still doesn't change anything. Her talking to her echo chamber doesn't affect what she's done and said. She can say whatever she wants, but as I've stated, there is a much larger number of people out there who are not fooled by her anymore. Regardless, this seems to be her final word on the subject for now, with her Twitter account being noticeably less active than usual. Judging from the response, the thread seems to have swung public perception heavily in Chugga Conroy's favor, as many of his fans express their support and his old Let's Play buddies share it around. Time will only tell if he'll return, but currently it seems safe to say that he will be welcomed back if he chooses to do so. This whole controversy revival has made me interested in whatever happened to Gerard Khalil, aka The Completionist, a controversy that also went down a few months ago. As a brief refresher, Gerard was accused of not donating money sent to his charity, the Open Hand Foundation, after fellow creators Carl Jopst and Some Ordinary Gamers began looking into the organization. It's an interesting juxtaposition to look at. In Gerard's case, during that time the scandal was going down and many of his friends in the video game genre spoke up in his defense, while in Chugga's case they either chose to remain silent or cut ties with him completely. In fact, one of the creators most loudly speaking in Khalil's defense was Antud, one of Chugga's biggest critics. And when they finally returned with their statements, the responses from their fan bases were night and day. While Chugga Conroy received near universal praise from his audience during this new round of updates, the completionist faced heavy backlash with his video being largely downvoted. A lot of the YouTubers that originally defended him actually came back and retracted their statements. So where do I see these two creators going in terms of a business sense going forward? Well, in the case of Gerard, ever since his comeback, he's seen about a 30% reduction in his fan base on top of his monthly channel views dropping in half. While it looks like things are stabilizing, we'll have to just wait and see if he'll be able to maintain his business in its current state with these reduced numbers. On the other hand, if Chugga ends up being seen as a man unjustly destroyed by cancel culture, I think he would not only get his original audience back, but also a brand new base that will be ready to support him. Regardless, at the end of the day, I think the most interesting thing about these stories is how close-knit and clicky the Nintendo YouTubers can be, in both supporting and attacking their own.